So I'm delighted that I'm joined for this uh, video by Nathan Aboko, uh, who would normally be on the other side of the camera, uh, as in he's the one who does all our editing for the different videos that we produce in the Diocese of Leicester. But I'm really pleased that he's agreed today to be uh, interviewed, uh, primarily as part of our Shaped by God Together process, in which we've been gathering stories from people all around the diocese. So, Nathan, thank you ever so much for joining me today. And let me just start by asking you how you are and how you're coping in the midst of this extended lockdown in Leicester. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Bishop Martin. Yeah, um, I'm I'm fine at the minute. Yeah, yeah. I've, um... Um, as a, as an artist and a, a videographer, I'm reasonably used to working on my own, uh, working um, um, in isolation at times. Um, but uh, yeah, even for me, it's um, it's had its uh, difficulty having this extended lockdown and knowing that um, you know there's um, places elsewhere where there's a lot more freedom to meet and that desire to meet has been uh, much greater. Um, for me, it's not been too bad, but but I actually live with my dad who is quite ill um, and. Um, is quite vulnerable to this so actually I need to take a lot of precautions uh, to look after him and to make sure that um, I don't bring anything in uh, when I um, continue my business um, so yeah that's that's where most of the, the pressures have been for me. Mm. Well thank you and uh, we're enormously grateful to you for all that you you do for the diocese um, particularly because these sorts of videos and uh, online work has very much come into its own during uh, during this period. Um, and as I said in my brief introduction, um, we're, we're doing this process now in the Diocese of Leicester called Shaped by God Together, uh, which is primarily thinking about the future shape of the diocese and mm -hmm. what is God calling us to be and to do in the Diocese of Leicester at this time. Um, and we've been gathering stories from people, uh, a good number of stories from people all across the diocese, people of different backgrounds in different contexts and, uh, and, and so on. So I wanted just to ask you whether you had just a brief story, maybe about something that you've been learning during this time, and what you felt God saying to you in particular during this period. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I've been saying, I'm, I'm quite used to, to being isolated, actually. But um, when you do that, um, lots of things can get magnified, uh, lots of thoughts, lots of worries. And um, yeah, just uh, any kind of quirks and things get magnified. Uh, for me, I've been learning the value of knowing uh, God's forgiveness in a very personal and simple way. Um, so, for instance, um, you know, there may be times when I've, I've fallen out of any kind of routine of, uh, of prayer and uh, scripture reading. And I'd want to uh, come back to God. And it's just a matter of uh, I found it just brilliant to actually just come back to God very simply and just say, you know, I'm sorry um, that I've done this. Uh, I'm sorry that I've not uh, spent time with you. Um, and just, again, remind myself in front of him of what he's done for me. Remind myself that he's the one in control of my destiny. He's the one in control of my life, actually. And um, allowing that to really just nourish me. Um, even when circumstances are, are the same and um, you know nothing particularly may have changed, just to know that he's nourished me and to know that that's true has been a real strength for me. Uh, so yes, yeah, so for me, it's uh, learning that simple coming back to God whenever um, I feel distant. Yeah, I'm sure many of us can uh, can relate to that in terms of particularly how routines and our normal ways of doing things have been interrupted. And something about learning simply to to rest in God and God's forgiveness and God's graciousness, as you say, that's uh, that's that's really significant. So, Nathan, during this period as well, you've been involved in um, the diocesan online service that we've been doing um, uh, most Sundays, uh, Sunday at 10. I call it a service. It's more a sort of reflection time, isn't it, really, for, uh, for, for people. Um, and as part of that, you've used your artistic skills to... Uh, give an interpretation of the the Bible reading for for that Sunday, um, and I'm just really intrigued to know wh where did the idea for that come from, and how how do you find that uh, using your artistic skills in worship like that uh, is helpful for you? Mm. Uh, yes, uh, so actually uh, doing that kind of art, doing art in worship, um, art um, in sermon uh, during sermons and during um, gym worship at churches is something that I do quite regularly. Um, it's really sort of part of my calling to uh, to worship God through art. Um, so when this lockdown started, when we, when it was just being announced, um, uh, John Barris and I got together, and we're thinking about just ways to um, yeah to engage the uh, the diocese. And um, John had this idea that maybe I could um, use some of my artwork uh, during the Sunday at service, uh, Sunday at ten uh, feature. 
so that's how it started. Um, and what I do is I'm, you know, I'll, I'll listen to the passage, I'll read the passage, I'll listen to the sermon uh, that's being given, and then I'll pray. And I'll, I'll pray um, and I'll be asking God, you know, God, what do you want to say to the people who are listening? What do you want to say to the diocese, to the city? Um, and then I'll be listening and some ideas may come to me. And then I'll start to incorporate those and keep praying as I'm as I'm painting um, and record that. And that's what we'll end up with. And yeah, that's that's what's been happening for the Sunday at 10. Well, and I would encourage people, anyone who's watching this who hasn't seen any of the Sunday at 10, I know they're still on our um, our Facebook page and YouTube page uh, and some really, really beautiful um, interpretations that you've given of those uh, that those Bible stories. So I do encourage people to take a look at that. And then also to think more generally about creativity in, in worship, because uh, we're having to do that in all sorts of ways at the moment. Um, and in particular, in terms of online worship and the whole question of how do we make it beautiful and, and inspirational to people. Uh, I suppose my final question to you, Nathan, is to ask whether you have any advice for people as, uh, as people are thinking about online worship and how we uh, engage with one another and with God. Um, what, what advice do you have about being creative uh, in that and uh, how we do that thinking, particularly about the future of the church? I mean, none of us knows quite what the future is going to be. Um, but we know that in some way or another, we are likely to have to continue with these creative approaches to worship uh, for, for the longer term. So uh, any, any particular pieces of advice you have around that? Mm, sure. Uh, so I really think that uh, we are creative as people. Um, God created us. He's the creator. And so we're created in his image. Um, and so I think when we engage in creativity, when we engage in artistic things, in any kind of creativity, we're participating in that nature um, of God in us. Um, you know, he's created us in his image. Um, and that's why I think art and uh, has such, such a hold on people, you know, in, in culture. Um, and so for Christians, I think doing that with God, you know, doing that in worship, doing that uh, with his presence, doing that while you're praying, um, is just a wonderful way of actually, um, in a sense, redeeming the arts, in a sense, bringing his presence into um, the world. And just giving um, um, depth and richness uh, to the experience of uh, living with God. Um, so I think um, during this pandemic, we've seen lots of creativity come about. We've seen lots of churches um, engage in online worship and online services in a way that they may not have been able to before. Um, so now it's a matter of taking that forward. So I would say to anyone who's interested in uh, learning to be creative with God or relearning to be creative with God, the first thing is to start with that idea of forgiveness, to remember that um, it's not about performance, it's not about uh, necessarily excellence, it's, it's just about being before God and just unleashing who you are, letting him guide you um, and knowing that he loves what you're doing. So take risks, I think, will be the first thing to do. Um, wisely take risks. Um, suggest things, uh, you know, be talking with um, your leadership if you're in a church, um, what you could do. And on your own, I would say just engage again, even in childlike creativity. Um, I started by doodling. Um, I would sit in a sermon and I would just doodle uh, my thoughts and I would just doodle some pictures of what was going on. And that's how I started. Um, and then I started to work those up into bigger pictures later. And then people started to get really um, touched by those. And people would ask me if I could draw some for them because it really helped them to, it just touched them on a different level. And I think that's one of the values of art. Um, and I think if you look at culture in general, uh, any culture is sort of marked by the art that makes it. So you look at classical Greek culture, you look at um, Roman culture, even uh, more, um, you know, more recent times, you'll see very different p pieces of art, um, sort of movements of art that mark different cultures. So for Christianity, we're not looking for a movement that marks a particular time necessarily, but we're looking for art that speaks about God. And I think if we can, again, just create that experience of what it's like to know God, what it's like for me to know God, what it's like for me to walk with God, even the testimonies that we have, and create those in an artistic way, through poetry, story, art, um, any other way, or even just videos as well, um, it can just break down the barriers of, um, that people would have to receive the word of God and to receive his testimony. Um, so I think, yeah, for the future of the church, I think it's, it's indispensable, really, to mm -hmm. just create but to allow people to start doing that at the very basic level and then just 
encourage one another to um, develop that. That's really, really interesting. Thank you, Nathan. And uh, I love that sense of uh, not only the, this being so much an important part of our tradition in the church, that art has played a huge part in terms of church church history and so on, mm-hmm. but that actually uh, for each one of us as individuals as well to uh, rediscover almost that sense of, of who we are as uh, God's creation and how we express that. I, I remember in my last parish, we had a, an artist who worked with us uh, and I had long conversations with her where the starting point was me saying, I, I, I'm not creative. You know, I don't do art. I'm, I'm just, that's just not part of who I am. Uh, but she kept going at me all the time saying, you are creative. You are. It's just a case of rediscovering that. And, uh, and I owe her a huge debt of gratitude, actually, for, uh, for that sense of rediscovering uh, the creativity that God has put inside of me as well. So thank you, Nathan, for your time today. And uh, I want to say a huge thank you to those uh, watching today and for all the creativity being expressed in our churches across the Diocese of Leicester and a real encouragement to go on exploring that creativity and developing the gifts of all of God's people uh, in doing that. So my thanks once again for all that you're doing and my prayers for all those involved in our creative ministry across the Diocese of Leicester.